And first, I would like to introduce myself. I'm a PhD student of uh, Tor Vergata, but uh, mm, I'm not a mechanics. Uh, I'm a engineering, civil engineer, so uh, maybe I'm a little far from uh, this group, but I'm very interested of this uh, thing, this uh, thing or presentations. Even before yesterday, I was a little confused uh, because I'm not sure whether this uh, workshop were interested uh, for me because I'm a civil <laughs> engineer and all these uh, presentations are related, uh, more related with the mechanics. But uh, um, when I finished uh, the yesterday, I found uh, there are many interesting things for me, especially for the uh, speech of uh, Professor Sonsina and Professor Nadarin. So I would like to say thank, thanks very much to the Professor Susmeyer to organize this uh, workshop. Okay. Um, after the wonderful speech of uh, Professor James, I'm a little heavy on my shoulder <laughs> because I couldn't uh, speak as well as Professor James. Uh, I hope, and my, what I did is a little different from you. I hope you will not force me, but so, the subject, uh, what I talk about is the fatigue failure of welded connection at the autotropic bridges. This, uh, this is the index, and uh, what I talked about here are mainly in that, in, in two groups, the first uh, one, two, three is uh, related to the welded connection. The first one is rib to back plate uh, connection, and second is uh, rib to diaphragm connection, and the third one is uh, rib to diaphragm to deck plate connection. Also, we call it short for RDDP. And uh, the first, uh, yeah, also uh, the second uh, part I would like to introduce is uh, fatigue improvement techniques. This is a photo to show the osteotropic deck. And the uh, osteotropic deck was uh, first used uh, in Germany after the Second War due to the lack of steers. So, therefore, the first advantage for osteotropic deck is lightweight. Because it is not uh, like a concrete uh, deck plate, uh, full of concrete and it's very heavy. And from this picture, we found that uh, this is the deck plate, uh, and this is the longitudinal rib, uh, and this is cross beam, uh, and this is the diaphragm. Uh, and we found that all this inside of the longitudinal rib, uh, it's uh, empty. So the weight uh, is very low. Also, uh, we found that uh, there are, are many other advantages, uh, like high strengths, durability, rapid construction and uh, life cycle economy. But here I would like to explain why it is uh, rapid construction because usually the osteotropic deck uh, was, uh, fabri is fabricated uh, in the factory. So when it is moved to uh, the site uh, to build it uh, has already finished. So we just, just need some time to to um, erected, to be erected, and the second uh, is the red one. I would like to say life for ex life cycle economy, because uh, the first investment for the tropic deck is uh, is, uh, is uh, much higher than the normal bridge deck, but for the life cycle economy, it's uh, much better because. Uh, mm, a good uh, design and uh, a good uh, uh, fabricated uh, osteotropic deck can last more than 100 years. As the great engineer John Fish said that uh, the osteotropic deck uh, maybe is the only solution can last forever. And on this picture we also found uh, there are some details of the osteotropic deck uh, and this is the cutout on the cross beam, and this is we call it a mouse hole because it's very small to cross the cables or some other things. And uh, here, this one, there is uh, no mouse hole or no cutout. All these things uh, are 
Both of these ways are still used. So because uh, the because the effect of the stress uh, state of, of this area sometimes is uh, complicated to explain and uh, not finished yet. On those topics, they could, could find there are many welded connections. Like for example, this is uh, at this plate place is a rubber rubber to deck plate connection, and this is a rubber to cross beam, or sometimes we call it a rubber to diaphragm connections. And uh, for this example here, this is what we call the RDDP. This is uh, the, uh, an example of uh, the fatigue failure of the tropic deck in Japan. Yeah. After the first uh, we uh, engineer for engineering, they don't they don't realize the fatigue problem. But uh, after 20 or 30 years later, they found that there are some uh, fatigue crackers in the osteotropic deck. So in the last two decade, decades, we have already the, um, done, no, no, not well, we, but uh, other researchers, uh, they have already the, done many investigations for osteotropic deck and uh, get further <coughs> for results. And this is uh, some uh, fatigue crackers in the tropic deck. And from this picture, we could find that uh, mm, the, the crackers usually occur at uh, or near the welded part. And this is uh, the SM curve of uh, your <coughs> record. <coughs> uh, this picture, I'm going to say, as uh, Professor Sonsino yesterday have already told, uh, um, it's better not to call this uh, um, like fatigue uh, limit. Uh, but in engineering, we are still a little <coughs> behind of mechanics, so we still call this the fatigue limit. And uh, European code, in European code, uh, there is some uh, spe specific, uh, specific uh, code for for the osteotropic deck. But um, also in American code uh, Ashto 2005, there are some uh, spe specific things for osteotropic deck. But uh, I'm not sure in some other um, code they have uh, similar things. You can find that this is the cutout and uh, the this category of uh, this type of details is uh, eight, 80, and we found here 80 is uh, almost here. So compared to the, this is the first one, the original material. Compared to the original material, the um, fatigue life is uh, not so high. And then here, we have the first uh, thing is the River to deck plate connections. This connection has already been studied uh, for many years, and uh, but uh, it is still uh, still being continued uh, because uh, there are still some things uh, not uh, clear. This is a typical crackers in uh, river to deck plate uh, connection. This is the river, and this <coughs> is the uh, deck plate. Uh, and here we found uh, the typical four crackers. All these uh, crackers we found here are near the welded connections. <coughs> and this is the model, to the sub model of the osteotropic deck uh, to simulate, simulate, simulate the fatigue crackers. Uh, but, um, Anyway, this uh, welded part is not uh, so good, but uh, this model gave us the idea that is uh, first, uh, first uh, to build a model or global, <coughs> global model for osteotropic deck bridge. And then, based on the analysis of the full model, 
we do some uh, submodal analysis. This is a numeric model uh, we used uh, for the analysis. And here we found that this is longitudinal river deck plate and diaphragm, and especially at uh, this plate is uh, cut out. In this model, the length of the length of the deck plate is uh, nine meters, and the <coughs> the distance between the two diaphragm is three meters, and the widest of uh, the deck plate is uh, six point nine meters. And this is the main shot uh, diaphragm. Here we found uh, that uh, the mesh near the welded connection is uh, much more smaller than the other plate. But here I have to say that uh, um, in this full model, or global model, welded uh, connection is not stimulated uh, in this uh, model. And this is, this is a rib. The top of the rib is 13 centimeters, and the bottom of the rib is 15 centimeters. And the height of the rib is also 13 centimeters. This is the load we use in the model. The fatigue loader we use here is uh, based on the Italian code uh, in 2008. Uh, and in, <coughs> in this picture, we found this is a pavement, uh, and this is a deck plate, uh, this is uh, ribbons, and this is uh, the loader. Usually, this uh, distribution angle is 45 degrees. And also, this is uh, similar with some other. Uh, <coughs> standard or codes. And in the model we use three different kind of load cases. This is the diaphragm of the orthotropic deck. This is the rivers cut out and we call this part, this part we call it tooth or teeth. Tooth like a tooth. And here the lower case one is uh, mainly located at the rivers, and the lower case two is uh, between the river and the tooth, and the lower case three is mainly located at the tooth, because uh, this is uh, in the middle of the of tropic lake. But uh, in uh, based on the previous uh, investigation, we found that uh, usually the maximum stress. Uh, not uh, occurred <coughs> for the lower case one, but lower case two or lower case three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. ah, one minute. One minute. Okay. And this is uh, stressed out the stress at the tropic deck uh, is for lower case three. And for in this picture, I would like to say the most important thing we found here is the uh, tropic the the peak stress. Uh, uh, Exactly located at the where did the connections, the rib to deck plate, uh, and this is to diaphragm mm -hmm. uh, connections. Uh, mm, the maximum stress uh, from the analysis we found is uh, exactly located at this point, uh, rib to diaphragm connections. Uh, and this is uh, some trick to show the crackers at the uh, <coughs> rib to diaphragm connections, uh, and this is. Uh, uh, RDDP connections. Okay, this is uh, the, the, um, the out of uh, plant is uh, placement, and this is uh, out of plant stress at the diaphragm. Because uh, based on the previous previous analysis, we found that uh, the fatigue life is not only influenced by the norm nominal stress, but also uh, by the out-of-plane stress. For the fatigue improvement technique, uh, and uh, today we would like to, um, to introduce the fluid bed pinny. Fluid bed pinny is the technique uh, has already been studied uh, by Torvegata in the mechanic engineering uh, by Professor Tariat, Tariati and Professor Barreta. And from the study they found that uh, 
fluid bed pinning is an effective method to treat the surface performance and uh, the, the fluid bed pinning is uh, much more easy to control because there are only two parameters uh, important. Uh, the first one is the stress, uh, <coughs> pinning stress, the second one is the pinning time. And this is a picture to show that uh, the temperature is not uh, so important uh, for the fluid bed pinning. And based on the Based on the investigation of uh, Professor Tariat and Professor Barretta, we continue to do the fatigue test uh, for the <coughs> fluid bed pin. <coughs> uh, this is some uh, picture to show the surface treatment. This is after treated, uh, the surface roughness is much, much, slow, much lower than before. And also, this is for not to grow past, uh, and this is what we, do, what we did uh, for the fatigue uh, test. Uh, and this is, uh, but this test is not uh, finished, uh, still being done. And this is uh, some results we get. Uh, and we found that after treating, uh, we found that uh, the fatigue life is uh, much higher than before. Okay, this is uh, some uh, conclusions. Uh, first is whether the connections are sensitive to fatigue crack. Uh, and uh, second is uh, fluid bed pinning is uh, effective way to <laughs> to reduce the fatigue uh, crackers. Okay,